to go through um, how I design cabinets in V-Carve, um, specifically how I lay out all my dados and my grooves. The first thing that we want to do though is determine the thickness of our plywood. So let's set the calipers down for this one. This is a lot easier. So I'm going to include in the description below this um, plan. So this is a plywood thickness gauge. I do have the tool paths generated over on the right, so you may have to change them depending on what tool you're going to use. But um, just a simple V-carve that shows the width of each one. So the, the nice thing about this is let's just say your machine is off just by a couple thousandths or something like that. Cutting this gauge on your machine, you're going to be within you, you know four of these grooves here. So um, like I said, that'll be included. And let's just dive right in. So um, first thing I'm going to start off with, I'm just going to make an easy 24 inch wide cabinet. And this is going to be the face frame. It's going to show the face frame anyway. So my width is, I'm going to make it 24 inches and I'm going to go 31 and a half inches tall. And the reason for that is we're going to have a three inch toe kick underneath of this cabinet. So at 24 inches, this is going to be the outside. I'm going to go to offset and typically I make my face frames an inch and five eighths. So we're going to offset this vector by an inch and five eighths and we're left. So if you wanted to just do one door, here you go, you're, you're set up now. Then for the inside dimension, I want to see what this is because I want to add a drawer to this. So I'm showing 20.65. And I'm going to make this an inch and five eighths tall. And I'm just going to drop that rail in there. So now I want six inches in between the bottom of my face frame to this rail. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a six inch box. I'm going to drop it in there. And while it's highlighted, I'm going to hold shift, left click this inside vector. And I'm going to move to the inside edge here and then I'm going to highlight this rail click this six inch vector and I'm going to go on the outside edge of that one and then I'm just going to delete this square or you can keep this square and here's your spacer for your um, drawers so now I also know that I need three um, rails here so I can actually write this down and know that's what I need for my rails on this cabinet that's 24 inches wide. So we're going to move this out of the way now and then work on the sides of this cabinet. So for the sides, I want to go 23 and a quarter inches wide and 34 and a half inches tall. So once we add our face frame, we'll be right at that 24 inch mark of where typical base cabinets are. And then using this same principle, you can make bookcases, toy boxes, anything with a, a plywood carcass. 34 and a half inches tall, you add an inch and a half um, countertop, and that'll get you to that 36 inch mark. You know, if your countertop's an inch thick, you can just you know adjust accordingly there. Okay, so our toe kick, they're typically three and a half inches deep to four inches deep and three inches tall. So we're just going to drop this box here while it's highlighted, left click and hold our vector. We're going to go inside edge, left edge, and now our toe kick's where we want it. And we're just going to snip away that uh, toe kick part there. So now I want to work on making our dados and grooves. So my plywood is 0.74 fits the best. So for my width, I want to overcut this a little bit. So I'm going to go 23 and 3 quarters and a height of 0.74. And I'm going to drop two of these here. And then I need a rebate for the back. So for the back, I'm going to be 0.74 in my width 
And I'm going to go 35 on my height. And apologize for my dog in the background. So with this vector still highlighted, I'm going to hold shift, left click on the outside vector we have. I'm going to go inside edge and then just center that. Then with the top, I'm going to do the same thing. Now for this bottom groove, I want this to be four inches off of the bottom to give me a little bit more meat here when we slide the um, lower partition in and the top partition. So I'm just going to make a four inch or shelf, whatever we want to call it. I'm just going to make a four inch square, highlight this outside vector, then hold my dado, shift, left click our square. I'm going to go outside of that and I can just delete this square. Click the dado again, outside vector. We're just going to center that. And now we have our cabinet outside just the way we wanted it. So in six minutes, I'm showing that we created our cabinet and then this left side of our cabinet side. So now we're going to left click and hold shift each one of these. Then we're going to right click and we want to move these to a new layer and I've got it labeled dado up here. We're going to turn off our first layer and I've got it blue. Taking our snippet, we're just going to come in and cut out the interior of these lines here so we have a complete vector. And here it is. So the next thing is I want some shelf pin holes here. So I can do one of two things. I can just kind of guess or I can go back here and measure at the top to this point and I'm right at nine inches or it'd probably be better to measure from the bottom rather. So I'm at 20 and a half inches. So I'm going to drop in a quarter inch hole for our shelf pins. They also have them in five millimeter but I think this is a lot easier for what we can find here. So um, to do this we're just going to array and copy. Our columns run in this direction, our rows run in this direction. So at 20 inches I'm going to do nine of these, one column, and I'm going to space them an inch and a half apart. And I'm going to group these together. And here's our shelf pin holes. And all I'm going to do at this point is just copy and paste. And just kind of move these over here where I want them. And then remember our top up here was roughly nine and a half inches. So same thing applies. And I should have grouped these together. We'll group these together and just slide them up. And here's our left cabinet side. So just be aware that you are going to have left and right cabinet sides. So now we're going to highlight this whole cabinet here, cabinet side, and we're going to mirror this, flip it to the right, create a new copy, and here's our left and our right. So at this point, we can come through and group all of our parts together. And we're done with this. So what I like to do to keep it easy, I'll cut my groove for my dados and grooves at 0.37 and that'll roughly leave me 3 eighths of an inch on the outside. So for this cabinet that's 24 inches, if I wanted it to be 24 inches perfect, I would cut my shelves, my top and my bottom, and my back at 23 and a quarter inches. But I like to give myself a little bit of play. So we're going to do 23 inches. So I know that my width is going to be 23 inches. My depth is going to be from this point to this back dado or back groove, so 22 and a half. So 22 and a half by 23. 
we need two of these. All right, so there's our top and our bottom. And you do have an option here too. You don't have to do a solid top or a solid bottom. I like to do them for my cabinetry, um, especially with the tops. It makes it a lot easier to, for the granite installers to get the top level and, and everything. Um, for the back, so for the back, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna be 23 inches wide. And instead of going 34 and a half, we're gonna go 34 and a quarter. And then that's gonna give us a little bit of room where we can make sure that we can square our box. So there we have it. Um, you can also, if you wanted to use like an eighth inch bit, you could pre-drill for your holes here. Um, so I pre-drill these after they're cut and then put my cabinet together. So you have your, your top or your bottom would slide into this dado here. Then I would install my top and then I would put my back on and square the cabinet. And I'll have a video of, of me constructing some cabinets too to, to show that process. For the face frame attachment, I just use pocket screws on the outside. Then saving this, saving my left and my right, I would cut out a piece of Luan, quarter inch plywood, or make another cabinet door to cover those exposed screws and pocket screws on the outside of the cabinet. So hopefully this helps. Um, again, thanks for watching these videos. Comment if there's anything else that I can help with or videos that you'd like to see. And then I'm going to show a couple clips here of Spark Robotics RTR84 cutting some of these parts out that I have on a cabinet job I'm working on. All right, thank you.